Do you already go through? Or about what? Approve these? Yeah, those are the ones we did last week. Oh, okay. Awesome. So, so they get approved typically the week before and then cut. Or someone, someone came in during the day, I didn't delay, but um, maybe we did that last week. I was wondering if you were going to make it. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <Dave. laughs> Just like a bad penny, you can't get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> Nickel inflation. There's people out in the hall there too, though. I can oh. hear them in the Oh, they want to know street. <coughs> they want to know your street also, but. Uh, what do we do? Yes. Recycling. Um, he hadn't removed some vehicles, etc. <clears throat> so he has since solved that. He removed the stuff, corrected the violation, 
and received a letter of compliance from the state. But in the meantime, we received some complaints about the hours of operation. And um, the biggest thing from my perspective, based on the licensing, is that there's a requirement for the hours of operation to be between 8, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday. And some of the complaints stated that there, were vehicle, there was vehicle activity well, after those hours, um, in the early morning hours, actually, and that there have been some uh, complaints made to the police department. So in looking into that, we determined, well, we didn't determine, I guess, well, that's one of the questions, is when the license was first issued, it was for a motor vehicle junkyard with ancillary towing not a separate towing service. So that's something that we have to determine whether or not that's a separate business that needs to come to the planning board for approval or if it's a logical extension or an accessory to Day's Auto Salvage. And in doing that, I think we need to make a determination whether the hours have to be expanded or enforced. So uh, in a Nutshell, I guess that's it. Okay. Chief, do you want to? Uh, how do we have some things you want to present to us? <laughs> well, since cast towing, the new ones took over for, for days on instead of cast towing. This represents every single call of service that we've had involving either cash towing, Day's Auto Salvage, or his employees. In our computer system, which only goes back to 2001, we have 394 total entries um, on either business and or the people associated with the business. We've had complaints from neighbors uh, during that time. We've arrested several of their employees <coughs> over the years for fighting with their neighbors, fighting with each other, criminal threatening, stalking, misuse of power, assault, uh, fugitive from justice, reckless conduct, disorderly conduct, and public peace. We've served restraining orders on their employees. We responded to the business for disturbance between the employees, employees and customers, and um, which resulted in criminal threatening, assaults, and domestic issues. I'm sorry, okay. Since what year was this? I'm sorry. Since 2001. 2001. Okay. Uh, we've had a number of complaints where people have disputed the business practices of their towing, uh, their rates, and whatnot. But we tell them it's a civil issue because we don't tell cash towing or anybody else how, how to do their how to do their uh, rate system. Uh, we've had uh, disputes uh, and complaints about people who have purchased items from him, tires or wheels, whatever the case might be. And we've had some, a number of complaints where vehicles were damaged, either on the property or while being towed. We've had complaints where property was stolen from vehicles that were on the property of cash towing uh, over the years. And we've also had uh, reports of thefts from vehicles that have been towed there. But on the same token, you know, cash towing has been the victim of some crimes as well. Um, they've had their business broken into a couple times. They've lost some tires and things like that. People have trespassed after hours when shouldn't have been there. Uh, they've been the victim of criminal mischief. And, um, and at least on one occasion, uh, they thought they had a theft from an employee. And most recently, within the last couple of months, uh, we arrested one of their employees, who's no longer an employee there, for misuse of power and public peace. Uh, apparently on two occasions on one particular night during the weekend, two or three, two in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning, something like that, he was in front of the business, squilling his tires, racing up and down the road and whatnot. Also, um, the same employee, while in a cash truck, after this, had gone to the city of Dover and Summersworth and shot out a number of windows and uh, was subsequently arrested by those departments. And they're looking at somewhere of almost 40 counts of criminal mischief. Summersworth has informed us that a cash truck, while in Summersworth, around the same time, uh, the occupants of that truck were involved in a purchase of illegal drugs while, while in the city of Summersworth. 
And since then, we've been told by the city of Somerville that they no longer use cash towing for their towing services because, because of that issue. So, um, it's, I'm not sure if it's really mole or, or if it's the, the employer, the people that he hires to do this, but you know, there's certainly is some type of an issue going on within the business that, uh, that you know, when you look at the span of, a, of uh, you know, almost 20 years, you get almost 400 police contacts with the business and people associated with the business. So. Thank you, Chief. I, I, should, have, I should have asked earlier, does, does the board have any questions of Chief Duchamp and Mr. Clark? No. The business owner of CAS does not live on the property, is that correct? As far as I know, no. No. So that's why he doesn't know what's happening. Do you have anything else for us? That's perfect. Well, well, so. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay, so I will now open it up to, for uh, comment from the public. I see Mr. Castanelli, you are here. It's your business, so I would like to let you go first, or, you, or at your discretion if you want to go last. <coughs> yeah, I'll go last. Okay. So, is there anyone else here that would like to speak to this issue? David R. Cole, Summit Road. Um, we've basically been having problems as neighbors since the first day he took over. Um, the most recent one um, that we called the police on was back on September 2nd, 3 a.m. in the morning. There's people out screeching tires, racing engines up and down the road. And uh, we called the police, and it was one of his employees. But just, it wasn't an isolated incident by any, any means. The, the road in front of his business is just peppered with tire squeal marks. So it's something, I mean, it's, it's a constant occurrence. They go out of there like, they just go out of there like crazy people, squealing tires, another one of his clowns that runs down the road and races the engine up, shuts the key off just about the time he gets in front of my house, turns the key back on again so the engine backfires. It sounds like a cannon went off. That's his big thrill. Um, I've had his guys pull up on my front lawn. We had a few days of rain, and they pulled right up on my front lawn to see if the water was running through the culvert and left ruts on my front lawn. And just the people he hires and the people you deal with, that you're dealing with, have zero respect for neighbors. And you're not dealing with intelligent people by any means. You can't talk to them. They're just, I don't know another word other than morons. You're just dealing with morons. Um, and like I said, it hasn't been... Just recently, this has been going on for since the day he took over, basically. Um, we lived next door to Chicky when you run that, and never had a problem with not one. Um, the recent occurrences with the drug sales and the reading in the Fosters about you know his trucks riding around shooting out windows and cars <coughs> and homes, I think is an absolute embarrassment to the town of Rollins, Rollins. I mean, you can, you can usually judge a business by their employees. And I think with all this that I've seen, I mean, that tells you pretty much what the business is. You're just not dealing with rational people. Over the years, I've had umpteen people that have had problems with them, either things stolen out of their cars, or got quoted a rate to come get their vehicle. They get there, and now it's gone up another hundred bucks. And if they Google, they Google him on Summit Road Road and see my business next door. And they, they end up calling me. And I just explain to them, nothing, there's nothing to do with me. Absolutely nothing. There's nothing I can do for you. I've given them the relative police number several times to call. Um, but it's just an aggravation. I had one guy come down the driveway, an old guy was going to beat me to death with his cane. Because these guys are giving him a screw in on the tow, and then he went to pick up his vehicle. And um, I guess he got there when he took a taxi to get there and got there and there was nobody there. He was, he was wild. Um, the other thing that just blows my mind is the $50 fee. I mean, that $50 fee is laughable if it was, it's not, you know, it's not, it's crazy is what it is. That's probably been 50 bucks for the last 50 years. $50 the $50 fee for the junk license. Oh, no, we increased it. 
Oh, it's not going to sit on the table. No, no, we increased it to 50. It had been much lower, I believe that. Oh. I mean, that's absolutely crazy. Look at what he's cost the police department. I mean, it's just absolutely crazy. That should be a thousand bucks, and that'd be that'd be a buy. I just paid two hundred fifteen dollars for a building permit. So it doesn't seem right to me. The taxpayer, the Robinson, should bear the expense of the way he runs his business, and he gets he gets off with a free ride for fifty bucks. I mean, that's that's a joke. Um, yeah, I'm not as well organized as I should be, I guess. But, I mean, that's basically it. I mean, this has been going on for years and years and years, and it's just not getting any better. It's getting worse. The, the quality of help that he hires just is getting worse by the day. And it's really time to do something. The, uh, the towing business, that goes on night after night after night. As I said in my letter that I sent you, one night I set up a game camera, just headed it right for his driveway at the end of my property line, and between the hours of uh, 6 o'clock at night and 7 o'clock in the morning, there were 30 trips in and out of his driveway with them tow trucks. That's all night long, in and out, in and out. And 9 times out of 10, there's no cars on. I don't know whether they say, they, sometimes they're not gone 10 minutes and they're back again. It's just, it sounds like, sounds like an interstate out there at night. And these guys, they use them, what's the junkyard, which is not supposed to be operational. They're using it all hours of the night as the hangout in between calls. And they're over there blacking radios, hollering to each other, working in the garage with air guns. Uh, a few weeks ago, one of them was out there with an old beat-up rubber tired backhoe at 2.30 in the morning, running it around the yard. Well, I guess it was something he had bought to fix up himself, so he figured out. 2.30 in the morning, I'm up, the rest of the world should be too. And he's out there playing with his back over the yard. So I mean, this is what we deal with day after day after day. So when things like that happen, sir, what do you call the police? Or? You do, but you get to a point where the cops are the cops are going to think we're the pain in the neck, and you know, you just get to the point where you can't call them every time you hear a noise. And I mean, judging by that pile over there, I think we called them several times and we're not alone. But it's really some time time to do something. That that towing business doesn't even belong there. Any other, any other business that's come into town has to go before the planning board, the zoning board. These guys have blew into town out of Massachusetts and they've done whatever they wanted since they come here. And it's just time to set them straight. So, uh, let me ask you this, Mr. Arthur. On, a, on an average night, on an average week, how many times a, a week do you think that you're disturbed in the middle of the night by the, by the business? Yeah, I mean, in the summer, it's, it's, in the summer, it's probably night week. When you got the windows open during the winter, you don't notice it quite so much. So, but there's times during the winter, during a snowstorm, they haven't even plowed their yard, so they got their trucks stuck halfway in the road and halfway out of the road. So you would say it would not be uncommon to, to hear them nightly, a lot of the year. Oh, during the summer, common, yeah, nightly. Okay. And one night, there's guys were out back in the junkyard with a pellet gun or a 22 shooting windows out of their vehicles at two o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's just the mentality you're dealing with. It's it's not your average neighbor by any means. I mean, these guys have been the neighbors from hell. Are there any questions from the select board? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. Anyone else that would like to <coughs> address the select board? Do you see anyone else? Do you want to go ahead, Mr. Kessler? <coughs> yeah. Okay, so um, getting back to Mr. Arkwell. He moved next to a junkyard. The junkyard was there before he even moved into town, and that's like industrial land. It's his own industrial. It's like the person that moved next to an airport, and then they complain about all the noise. And that's what happened with Mr. Arkwell. So, uh, 17 years ago, my mechanic had a, a car that he put in the uh, Halloween Owl race, and actually he won a trophy. But because he got stuck in the mud, Mr. Arkwell complained about the noise. So he came over there yelling at my son, and he sucker punched my son in the head. And then my son got arrested. I mean, this guy comes on my property, tells my son, hey, I'm going to shut this place down, and then sucker punches an 18-year-old kid. So that's what, and then he was at the dump passing out flyers to have the place shut down. This is the junkyard. But anyways, uh... You know, I pay my taxes there. The taxes, I think, more than double from 
when I first, I'm not sure what they are, but they're over $4,000 on taxes. I register all the tow trucks in this town, and I pay big money for the town taxes or whatever it is to register the vehicles. So I don't know what he's talking about, the $50 fee isn't enough, but uh, I am a taxpayer here. Uh, I've been doing AAA cars for 25 years, and AAA is 24 hours a day towing. You know, so for 17 years I've been registering uh, the vehicles there. His house is so far away from my driveway, I don't see how he could hear any noise from where his house is. It's not like it's, you know, abutting the driveway. So it's got to be at least two to three hundred yards away. <clears throat> so I think that's a little bit of exaggeration about the trucks coming in and out of my driveway. As far as uh, hiring the help, I hire them as temporary drivers. I put an ad in the paper on the internet looking for drivers. These guys come in, we train them. What they do after hours, I'm not there to see what they're doing. And then I fired both of those guys. <clears throat> the guy that bought the heroin out of my tow truck, he was off duty. He wasn't even working that day, but he was in my truck and he went to some mobile home park. And as soon as I found out, I fired him. He only, both of these guys, the knucklehead with the BB gun and this other guy that bought the drugs, they only worked for me for like two weeks and they're gone. All my other drivers have been with me for years. Frank McIntosh has been with me over 10 years. So it's not like I have a bunch of, you know, fly-by-nighters that work for me. I don't know what, you know, when you hire somebody, I don't know what they're going to be like. You know what I mean? I need drivers, I hire them. Um, Triple H does background checks. Yeah, Triple does the background checks on them. And if, you know, if they don't pass his background check, then I, I don't hire them. I have to let them go. Uh, so I think that's about it. Was there anything else I missed as far as, uh, you know, like, so we told for the police summers were at the snow removal or the Dover police, landlords, when people want to come and pick up their cars, we have to give them that car. We can't say, oh, no, sorry, you got to come back at, you know, tomorrow. So if they want to get their car at 2, 3 in the morning, they call me, they meet the driver, and they release their vehicles to them. I didn't even know you arrested somebody, you said, for peeling rubber out in front of the place at 3 in the morning. Um, so you, you've been doing this for 17 years for... From Rollinsford, yes, and I've been AAA for 25 years. I started back in uh, 96. Where, um, in, in the house that's in, on your property, is that a rental? No, that's my place. So you do live yeah. at the... Not all the time, so. but I'm there, yeah. I used to rent it. I rented it a few times. It didn't work out. And um, I guess I'm a little concerned, Mr. Cassie, and only that since 2001 there's been 394 calls to your to your business. I mean, I understand that as of late you've had some sort of bad apples that you've hired and you've had to let go, but for 17 years you, you've racked up quite a few complaints from the police against your, your, your business. So yeah. I'm, I'm trying to... Well, it's very I can't, that it's I can't control that. Here, if there was a way I could control that, I would. But I can't control what happens if the guys are fighting. Or you must be talking about Harland and and you know the other people. What other people do, I can't control. Them. Okay. And this is the first I heard about it. Was like three hundred and something of them. I mean, what was I supposed to do, Chief? Does the select board have any questions? Um, I, I would just mention that, so, so if there's stated hours of operation between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., I'm not sure why this is now a round-the-clock operation. Well, that's for the junkyard. Okay. All right, the towing business is not an allowable use, Mr. Cassino. You were grandfathered for your junkyard. That's a residential area. You're not allowed to run any other businesses there unless you get a special exemption. So that's why we're here tonight. Okay. So what's going to have to happen? The select board will is not going to make a decision tonight, but more than likely you're going to, have, as a condition to get your junkyard license reapproved, you're going to need to go to the planning board and talk about this business you've been operating over there. Now, I'm sorry it's taken all these years. I can't speak for past boards why they did or didn't do their due diligence, but 
it's, it's been brought to our, 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 to us, to our desk, and we have to deal with it now. So mm -hmm. I apologize because you weren't dealt with in the years past, but this is what's going to have to happen now. Now, that's just my opinion that that's what's going to have to happen. The board's going to have to deliberate. We're not going to do it tonight. We're going to close the public hearing and we're going to start our regular meeting because we've got to work on the town budget. Um, but I would expect you to be hearing from the town at least in the next week or two as to what the select board has decided. But i got to tell you, after hearing from the chief of police, I'm very concerned that there's been 394 separate calls over there. That, that's very concerning to me. I never knew any of this. So I never Neither did we. Well, okay. You know, I'm not here to argue yeah, with you. Yeah, this no. is a public hearing. Mm -hmm. But you run a business. If you don't know what your employees are doing and you live there, that, that's a little troubling to me. I, I don't understand that at all. I, I have employees. And if they did anything like that, they would, well, in fact, we have employees of the town we've had to get rid of recently because they were misbehaving, let's just say that, and we got rid of them. We, we, I don't understand how... 394 different occurrences, and, and you don't know anything that's going on at your business? I, that I don't understand at all. I'm sorry, but I don't. Yeah, all of that happens most of it at night when I'm not there. Okay. I, I, like I said, this is a public yeah. hearing. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm just trying to figure out how, yeah. as a business owner, you couldn't know any of this was happening at your business. It's, it's just a little strange to me. Yeah, well, if somebody steals something out of somebody's car, they call the police, they report it. Yeah, I knew that. So what am I supposed to do or not? I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure you probably fired the person. You probably handled it correctly. Yeah, the police called me at 3 in the morning saying that Aqual told them somebody's in my yard breaking windows with a BB gun. And they said, can I go in there? I said, sure, go ahead. You don't need the permission to go check it out. It's, um, it's concerning, that's all. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm sure it's very concerning for the people that deliver around here. So. But anyways, so do we have any other questions from the board's perspective? Anyone else want to speak at the public <coughs> hearing? If not, we're going to close it. We're going to we can recess for about five minutes, then we're going to start the, uh, the uh, select board meeting. <coughs> um, there's, you can go right down the whole list of um, rules that he's supposed to be complying by in that junkyard, and there's better than half of them that he's, he's not even close to being in, being in line with. I mean, it's, and that should also be addressed. Uh, so you understand, Mr. Arbo, it's a separate process. So there's... He's in review to go through, the, the, the owner of the junkyard is in review to go through his license. He has some issues with the state, like Mr. Clark said, so we've, that's been put on hold. Um, because of these complaints, the, uh, the state advised us that we need to have a public hearing and deal with these separate complaints, because it's a separate business that's being operated that was not approved by the town, so that's why we're here. So I appreciate your, your, your concern for the other part of it, but that's not really why we're here tonight, just so you, you understand. But if you want to leave anything in writing, if anyone does, we're, we'll be happy to put it in the file and consider it when we make our deliberations. Which, and it will be in public, so it's not like we will meet separately or secretly to talk about this. It will be in a select board meeting, probably next week, I would assume. So if you want to come back and watch it, it will be on the agenda. But you're free to leave that if you want to. So if there's nothing else to be said, we're going to close the public hearing. And uh, like I said, we're going to reopen at 6.30 for our regular scheduled meeting. Thank you all for coming. I guess I don't know. Um, and we will open the uh, the regularly scheduled select board meeting for the fifth of November. Back Fox Day. All right. Um, first order of business is the approval of minutes. We have the 29th of October and November 3rd, which was our um, uh, first set of tax rate on Saturday morning before the budget workshop. Are there any corrections or additions, retractions that need to be made? I didn't see the third, unfortunately. All right, then we won't do it then. We'll, we'll, we'll wait on we'll that. Did that go out? out? The third. Earlier today, she did it. So if you didn't have a chance, we'll just hold off. No, but we did the 29th. I did. I okay, so we're we good with the 29th, though? Mm -hmm. we'll, yep. Okay. So we will approve and table until next week, so folks can have a chance to look at it. I don't think they're terribly lengthy. But I, right. I don't, wouldn't feel comfortable with you doing it if you haven't seen it. All right, community input. Is there any community input at this point in the meeting? Seeing none, department heads, building inspector, code enforcement. Tom, come on up. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you for coming early. You're welcome. 
So, the first thing we have on the agenda is the junkyard license. I don't intend to um, to make a have us make a decision this evening. I think we should think about it for a little bit and come back perhaps for next week and we'll have it on the agenda and talk about it. But sure. Do you have any um, anything to add to it? Or? I, I think you touched on all the key points, but the uh, important part, one of the important parts, the hours of operation and and you're right. I mean, it's something that we probably should have picked up on a long time ago. But I really wouldn't know. I, I wasn't really aware of the extent of the towing. Excuse me, then versus now. Right. And I, I'm not familiar with the AAA standards or anything. So I mean, if they do it 24 hours, that's certainly something for concern. But it's not an approved use anyway. And, and the, the towing business, no, the uh, yes. junkyard was grandfathered. Right. right. So that that makes sense. But yeah. There was, and I understand it, some towing, but in relation to the junkyard. To the junkyard, right, it's all that. Not right. a whole separate business. Right. So, yeah, I think that definitely needs plenty more consideration. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyone have any questions about that? the process? No. Or? Okay. So, well, uh, we may call on you for more uh, sure. expert advice. Yeah, so of course. Yeah. So no. If in the event that, you, that um, we refer him to the planning board, um, you feel that his junkyard is completely um, okay by what I, the state has done. And I wouldn't say completely. There were some small issues that he had yet to take care of as far as uh, some screening and uh, I don't remember specifics. Something to do with the front yard and, you know, basically the appearance. So those are things that he would have to resolve, I think, before the board just issues that separate permit okay. regardless. But, but it, to answer your question, there are outstanding issues, yes. Okay, because it looks like they had improved their uh, their outside part of outside of the gates. They have, yeah, yeah they have. But so there's still issues. So it's yes. not an automatic that it's going to get approved because they followed all the junkyard rules. Correct. Okay. Over the years, um, there have been minor infractions. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to have gravel, I believe, right outside, yeah. mm -hmm. and he'd get some and, and bring it out, and it would be okay for a while. We haven't been as as hard on them on those sort of things, mm -hmm. but there were some real serious issues of fluid being drained, and yeah. uh, storage, or and things, and the state really came. And that's the state's burden really to come down heavy on them, and, and what I understand he has taken yeah. to resolve some of those those issues. But there are still also, uh, there are unresolved issues from the town's perspective, okay. still. But he's required to have water testing multiple times a year, right? I mean, they're all on wells there. All surrounding. I don't think it's a condition of uh, use for the town. It should be. <laughs> well, I, well, none of us were here when when this was done. Well, at least it's 17, 18, 18 years ago. So. Yeah, it's an excellent point. And certainly, I'll look into it with the ES see if that's a requirement. Because I mean, it's all kinds of fluids. Oh. Whether you whether it's intentional or not intentional, yes. it's still all kinds of fluids there, and everyone around him was on a right. It's on well. Oh right? yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean. I'm sure that his butters have theirs tested the often and the hands too. Yeah. Okay. That's I a good just, point. Okay. I'll, I'll follow up on that. Thank you. Okay. So there's a lot to, 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 to think about with this, for sure. Um, Eversource request for Spruce Street. to right. Remove some poles. <laughs> right. So you're... Your email confused me because I thought I did understand it. And then you said, do we need to come in and discuss this? Oh. I figured maybe you should if I was missing something. But... Well, I, uh, this is a, a, kind of a small one, but um, I was referring to the PDF that he sent, and they were just, you know, green and, and, and red, so it's, it's relatively minor. I mean, the standard procedure for them to be doing this, you know, to get permission from the municipality, of course. Mm -hmm. And the only big difference with this, with this being Spruce Street, and these are the two new houses, mm -hmm. um, this one, I don't think it's, yeah, they may have started the site work on this one. But because of those, and because of the location, especially at this pole, it's right in front of the house and adjacent to the driveway, it has to move. So they did their own engineering and computations and whatever, and decided that this was a solution for them. And the locations aren't that big a deal, I don't think. And the only other issue was, no, the only other thing was that uh, the height. You know, they went from 30 feet to 40 feet, but that, we don't regulate the height of anything on, you know, 
And they're existing poles. They're being yes. moved. It's not like <coughs> with new construction we require underground yes. connection to utilities. But yes. these are existing poles. that are moving yeah. over. So well, I don't and that is a good point because this new pole in between the lot, it will be providing service to the buildings mm -hmm. underground. It will. They yes. can run them underground from yes. that part. Right. So at least yes. they're doing that. But, yeah. but it's not like they're, they're putting up four new poles. No, I mean, no, it's, no. It's, these are the ones that are there. There's no new no ones. Poles, right. so, but, so when we get time, when, we, when that comes up to sign, we discuss whether or not we'll take it. But thank you for coming. Yeah, well, sure. And the other thing we have to talk to you about is the camper on Prospect Street. Right. It's still there. It is. And um, I've been by several times. Um, yep, we're waiting. Day and night, and there's been lights on. Yep, so. and I, I'm, I'm sure the uh, time for the owner to respond has passed. So our procedure then will be, you know, send a second, a little more strongly worded letter. Right. And then okay. if they feel it complied, we'll just send it to the people. Okay. Because we had uh, a neighbor. Yeah, reach out to us again and ask, you know, what's yes. going on. Denise have brought it up a couple weeks ago, too, right? Whatever happened to that. Yeah, so. yeah Caroline mentioned to me today again. And yeah. yeah we'll, 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 we'll There's a little driveway now, it looks like, in front of where they're... <laughs> so there's, there's the camper, and then there's always two cars parked in front of it by the satellite dish, and there's lights on. I've been by uh, several times when yeah. we were looking at some property in the street, so... I definitely I noticed it. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else for Tom? Or anything for us that we need to? We probably have enough, right? So. All right. Um, I think that's it. Was there something else I was supposed to ask you? I don't know while you're here before you. No, it's not you. Okay. I think we're good then. All right, sir. Thank you very much, Tom. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll reach out if we need some more uh, help with the junk. Sure. I'm sure we will. And, and yeah, if you're going to be deliberating next week, I'd be happy to come back. Okay. Oh, I'm we have a follow-up on the one in Rollins Road? How is how is that one, the one that... The camper? No, no, the... the one twelve. Oh, 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 112. So that was... Legal has that, right? Were you supposed to go... Yes. Yes. Um, I can't remember how long ago it was that we received um, an email from Steve Roberts' office that... They were going to send another, they were going to, not us, but they were going to send a letter. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess, I don't know what happened. There's quite a few so vehicles and other bits of debris have been removed, so. Yeah, but there's still it's not 100%. Of, yeah, 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 there's yeah. still a lot. Yeah, th I'm, thanks for mentioning it. I'll, I'll follow up on that also. Okay. Check with Steve. Uh, yes, Steve perfect. Steve's office tomorrow, see what's going on. We'd like to finalize, to get that finished every Thursday. Yeah, yeah that's been going on way too long. Way too long. Yes, it has. <laughs> way too long. Yes, it has. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Welcome. All right. The fire department doesn't appear to be here. So, George, I, I like to go in alphabetical order, because I'm the guy that suggested it, but you got a lot more than the chief has, so team we bring him up. So. Thank you, George. Unless he's got a whole file folder full of things no, I don't know about. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 Um, I confirmed today with Caroline that the town received four thousand dollars from Homeland Security for reimbursement for the uh, um, update that we did for the emergency operations bond. So the only thing that we have pending with the Homeland Security now is the uh, the repeater, yep. the twenty-four thousand dollars repeater, and the the grant, uh, or not the grant, but the uh, the storm related uh, the March storm. Yes. And we're finalizing the figures for that, so FEMA right. should have all that paperwork by the end of next week. So. So we'll move forward with that. Perfect. And we have, I think, um, four thousand dollars downstairs to turn in for okay. details uh, and what uh, to, uh, tomorrow to, to Caroline. Okay. So. Good. Uh, um, I, I sent you folks an email last week that we had to do a bring to there to the electrical uh, inside the sally port. The uh, um, one of the uh, the lights, the, the ballast went, uh, but the big concern was this was the motion sensor. Right. So we had no no electricity in there whatsoever. Uh, m and Electrical Service, uh, Burke was fun, kind enough to come the next day to take care of for us. So I purchased order number here for number 1473 to m and Electrical Services for repairs to lights in the Sally Port sensor and um, ballast for $242. I will move purchase order 1473 in the amount of $242 to m and Electrical Service uh, for repairs to the lights in the Sally Port. Second. All right. Purchase order fourteen 
173 has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No. So we're all good now. Everything is working in the Sally Port. Everything is good. All right. All right. Any other questions or discussion? Seeing that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. A couple months ago, I was here uh, before you looking for permission and uh, Curtis Alert to replace the batteries and AED units. Yes. Uh, some of them. Yeah. Uh, well, I should have just replaced them all at the same time because within the last couple of weeks, the remaining two started beeping and then one didn't beep. Now we've got the dead batteries. So, out of my equipment, I count one item. Personal number 1535 to a quality response systems for two AED replacement batteries for a total of $338. Motion to accept purchase order 1535 for quality response systems for two AED replacement batteries for a total of $338. Second. Any other any questions? No, is this something that we can't have one in stock? Is that something that you you have to buy like a car? I mean, I think we just purchase them as, as we go needed. because we, we can get them relatively relatively quick. Okay. And uh, you know, had one from stock, and all of a sudden you know, you're spending 100, and, you know, almost 20 dollars per battery. Mm -hmm. That's on the shelf, and that that may run out of power just sitting on the shelf. Sometimes yep. so things just don't. Okay. person to deal with the facility management in the basement, um, right or wrong, you have, it's fallen on you. Um, are there things, um, are there items that you can think of that we may not be aware of that are not being maintained or we may not be budgeting for to provide preventative maintenance? We talked about the, the um, generator, so we've got, we, we think we have a handle on that. We know about the, the lift. We've got Mold remediation. <laughs> I don't know if it's under control, but we got it budgeted, at least, right? So uh, we've now been finding out about the, uh, is it the compressors or the, 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 the air conditioning units. I can't remember. The compressors. Are there other things that we're just not thinking well, about? I think at some point, uh, one time the town, uh, I thought we had an agreement with one of the garage door companies. That's the other one. We do have that, yes. Okay, okay. okay. Oh, we do yeah, have that. that. Yep. They do them all, I guess, at the same well, time. Well, they don't do ours because no one's ever come to check ours. Right. So um, right. it was my understanding that the police weren't part of that package. And our doors are, uh, you know, 20 years old plus now. So um, I think in the future we need to look at replacing some of the doors and, uh, and uh, you know, at least a good cleaning and whatnot of the track system. And, right. So we, we need to get you part of that package. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good to know. You also have to put the boiler on there. Yeah, we talked about the furnace in the past. Yeah. Because 
my thought of a preventive maintenance is like come in does a cleaning every year and, and the same and generators changing oil and that's what I'm talking about for preventive sure. maintenance. Okay. And the towns have been coming up. Well, well, that, yeah, right? they, they were actually last Friday to do that yearly maintenance for the. Uh, Who is this? The towns. They did the. Uh, oh, they okay. cleaned the boiler. They do. Last Friday. Okay, but see, I think this is the only building that they do that to. I'm, I'm well, not remember sure. several months ago we did that service contract for the furnace in the HVA right. system, so, so that includes that includes a. Oh, okay. All right. Because right. I don't think the yeah. other buildings have yeah. uh, as much to look at, you know, and like generators, like the fire station. I don't think they've had a tune up since they got it, you know. So that's what, that's what I am looking to have done, so we don't have the big surprises that we had this year. Right. We still have old equipment, so we're going to have those surprises, right? you know, but we can help delay it, you know, I think. I think the hopes uh, moving forward um, next year is to have someone as a coordinator. More of the responsibility of the duties of the town administrator would be to coordinate some of these right. uh, activities, I would think. No. But it really isn't, should not be your responsibility as the chief of police to be building a facilities maintenance supervisor, too. And it's just not. Not fair. I mean, maybe we can squeak in the, the generator under the emergency preparedness <laughs> office, but that's a stretch too. I mean, it's still not, you know. Well, just being the, the old time, maybe, and one been here for Well, there's that too, right? I don't mind doing it, but, but, but you know, until recently, we were always still, we can't do that. We can't do that. So, wow. um, at least in the summer, last couple several years, you know, we've been starting to do some routine maintenance and, right. and some preventative maintenance. Right. And I understand, you know, you do a little bit each year, so you right. know, you'll get a great big wall. Right, right. Yeah. But, yeah, I think you mentioned all the large stuff. Okay. And so the, the boiler downstairs, we have it on this, well, on the CIP right now. We haven't finalized it yet to replace it this year at 25 grand. Um, I know there there's an effort afoot to uh, relocate. I know that it's still ongoing. You're, you're still meeting and doing things. The, the, the police station and perhaps the town hall combining those things. But... Even if it passed this year, realistically, it's not going to get built for, for at least year, another year, maybe two, right? right? When it all gets finalized. So, do we have, do we think, two more years of life out of this thing downstairs? Man, I know you're not, you're not the, you're not a magician. You don't, yes. you don't, you don't have a, a crystal ball. I get that, but you're the one who's been really the, the go-to person down there. That we've been lucky. It is, it's working. Okay. Uh, and a few times it did die. You know, Tom's came right away and replaced it. Uh, the biggest concern is we get that. The side would blown out, right? Um, and, they, and the insurance company has mentioned, you know, you really need to do something because one of these days it really blows. I mean, right. have a potential for a large fire, right? Um, let me do this. Let me talk to Townsend, okay? And uh, I'll have Mike talk to their uh, right. technician that worked on it last Friday and say, what do you think? Right. You know, are we on death's door? Do we really need to do it right now, or can it wait a year or two? Perfect. At the most, so that would be very helpful. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's real. That's what we're, the, really the biggest thing on the budget. Yeah. And it really isn't your budget, so it's, we, we um, so yeah. But like I said, you've been sort of the default person. And actually, you don't mind doing it as long as uh, um, as long as someone's maintaining. The we appreciate what you've been there. Any other questions or items for the chief? No. no. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. You too. Thanks again for your info earlier. It was uh, eye opening. All righty, George. Oh, you should have stayed on vacation, George. Hey, it is it's getting it is. cold now. It's budget season. It's the worst time of year. You gotta start plowing again. But not yet. Let's hope. I have a PO tonight for the city of Dover for vehicle inspections and some work they did on truck number two on the brakes out of the account line of 4312707 of vehicle maintenance, $226.62. Okay. Let me have someone move in a second. I, got uh, I moved the purchase order 1499 to the city of Dover for 226.62 for vehicle maintenance and inspection. Second. Okay, so moved and seconded. Um, remind us, vehicle two is the top kick? No, it's the uh, it's it's international. Okay. All right. Are there any uh, questions? There was an neighbor who came and had to replace on it. So. Understandable. I'm sure they they probably rust out. I can imagine. Well, I was going to say, you can come to a lot of salt. Nature of the beast. 
Um, any questions? No yeah. concerns? Okay. Um, all those in favor of purchase order 1499 say aye. 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 Opposed? And it's coming under your vehicle maintenance. Correct. Line 10, 11, 5. Ooh, I don't think anyone wants to reload the list to come up. I know I don't. Do you get them or do you get them back to us? I don't remember. We get them. We, we keep they them. stay here. <laughs> I'm so used to you sitting over there, and now that you're not, I, I, listen, change is hard. Okay, <laughs> anything else for us, George? Nope. Great, well, we've got, we got a couple of things for you. So, Sligo Culver, um, Aaron... Um, Call me today. Perfect, okay, so he's going to set up, who's going to reach out to me? Thursday morning, Thursday morning, okay, perfect. All right. And we have had a volunteer, chair of the, of the budget committee, um, John Ordway, has uh, volunteered or asked if he could work with, with you or Ed, probably, actually, to talk about, well, both, both of you, actually, um, to do some uh, cost projections of, of work that's being done at the transfer station, and actually it's a highway department, too, I think, actually, um, for around, um, I can be where you are. You, 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 you are the, you're on the budget, right? You want yeah. To plan well, they were, they were questioning the reason why we gave pay raises out. Um, in the middle of the year. Mm -hmm. um, so my response was, it's because of the cost savings that you guys are providing for us. So after which John Ordway, Ordway. 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 has volunteered, because he does this for a living, um, to kind of put it all in writing of what we've saved and did projects of our own. And he has asked if he can speak with you and Dad, so you can outline what you've done without having to be contracted out. Um, and then they can, you know, give this to the budget committee as well, and, and to the town, I would assume, of what we're saving by not contracting. So if you guys are good with it, um, you'll Bring just give them the <laughs> blessing, you know. But it's really more about this is what we're, this is our plans, this is what we're going to do ourselves, because a lot of things are, you're doing on your own. And um, this is the savings that we would have based on that. So, so if you can just go through the list of different projects yeah. that you yeah. Able to do Especially Sligo, so because he knows it. He was well. His brother-in-law is it. Um, the Putnam is it. Yeah. I think they're related somehow. Uh, no. It? No, no, not Putnam. Um, no, uh, the one that you worked with so much on the first Colbert. Oh, Aikman. 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 Um, so he Just knows what you've done there, and he had mentioned that as well. So it's those kind of things that they're looking for. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Well, he doesn't want to spring that someone just show up and want to give you a heads up. Yeah. Okay. I've talked with him several times before in the past. Okay. I have no problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Very good. And we do our own benefits. Oh, I would think. So the GMC to the top game. So this was uh, a topic of quite a bit of conversation on Saturday as we go through our, yeah. our, our budget deliberations. Um, we'd like to get a second opinion. So the city of Dover has been very kind to us, very helpful over the years. Um, but because it's such a large investment, um, we'd like you to take it somewhere else and have them give their opinion. Oh, on. Wow. So there's, what we were thinking about, Roger's Auto Body has a place in yeah, Summers work, right? You know, someone, a second person told me that he doesn't, and that's oh, well, my, that wasn't mine, okay. but there's a mix. Mix over, and, and, and yeah. South, David, David uh, does stuff for us too. With, South like, David, 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 or, 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 Whoever is closest yeah. than you think yeah. is. Uh, um, I have no problem with that. So just get him to do a look over and see what he thinks. Um, if it can last another year or whatever. Um, but yeah, I guess I, I thought Rogers did when they built that new place in Summit. They're still doing that. Yep. yep. Well, then we, don't, yep. we just figured because yeah, it's trying to keep it obviously. In. The owner of Lism Town and mm -hmm. would have some right. sort of skin in the game, which would be good. Mm -hmm. so, to David's treated as very good at big so. Oh, I, I, absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't. Uh, there isn't many, a, many an issue with that going there. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but we would like to have someone else take a look at it. And it's Ooh. not that we don't trust Dover. It's um, it's just a very large investment. So we'd like to have folks take a look at it. Um, it's um, mm -hmm. it's age-wise, it's older. It's not. It's, right. That's younger than my car, but, but it gets beaten a lot and, more. And I know that's going to be a tough, but you're not going to get a lot of miles on any of your trucks. They're going to get beat up before they, before they get miles over. They're going to die before they get miles over. A lot of miles over. So if there's ways that we could, um, we understand that the, the truck may not have been designed to, 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 to 
best advantage to the type of groups and things that we'd be using here in town, or what it would be used for in town, or if there's a way we can retrofit in any way. I, mean, I don't know. I, perhaps not, but I, I, it's like rebuilding a truck. You know, it's, they, what they did is they took the small tires off it, put big truck tires on it. They got a dump body the same size on that truck as it is on the 4700 International. Right. You know, they did everything against what that truck is designed for. Right. You know, so I mean, they did it to keep it under the 26,000 pound GVW, so anybody can drive. It. I get that. Yeah. That's they could have done that with a smaller, left it as a smaller setup like most of the towns around did, right. and got the benefit of that. Right. They took that so small so. truck and made a big truck out of it, and right. it does shorten the lifespan. Can you explain a little bit about what you've experienced? I know we talked about it in depth at our meeting, but like going up on Mechanic Street. Yeah, I mean, and the, the it's truck is it's two wheel drive for one thing, which we don't have a lot of places in town where you need four wheel drive, but if you're downsizing the truck, you've got to have a truck that's able to. Right. Push a plow and climb a hill. Right. And that truck's not a downtown truck because it's a smaller truck. I mean. So that's my other question. I'll let you finish. Go ahead. Uh, the sander on that particular truck, and that's the way it was in the past, and now they have sanders that are designed for the sand that comes out underneath the truck, so it's salting ahead of your wheels. Oh. Okay. And hmm. it's all inclusive in the dump party. It's, oh, really? it's one unit. You're not having to take the sander up so you can go haul snow. It stays. Right. It's all part of it. You know that's what we're looking at. Uh, a new truck. If if we decide to go with another truck, we're looking at an all-wheel drive because you do have some pretty good hills. Like coming up in the Legion, trying to climb that hill and plow. Right. Climbing. You know you're pushing 20 feet of plow if you're coming away. Right. So you know, but that other truck is spinning the whole time, and you get. You know, you're not making that hill in the first try a lot of times. You end up backing up several times. So, you know, that's become an issue. The power of the truck, it just doesn't have the big enough engine because right. it was designed to be a small truck. Right. Uh, there's, there's so many flaws. I'm not saying the truck ain't going to last another winter. I'm not saying the truck's not going to last another two winters. I'm just going on what I was, last year was supposed to be replaced, and I decided, let's try it a winter, and I wanted to see how it right. lasts. We had a hydraulic failure in it. We repaid that ourselves. Uh, you know, that's only the beginning. You know, you're going to start having stuff like that. Right. Way. That we understand. So, I guess maybe I wasn't, uh, maybe I was misunderstanding. So, for the most part, structurally, we believe the truck is in fairly decent shape. It's just, right. yes. it was not designed to do te basically the job we wanted to do. It's got a little bit more equipment on it than it needs for the side okay. of the truck. So, if we want to try to sell this vehicle, what do we think we could get for it? I couldn't tell you, but they said that the company that would we, we could sell it out, right? Mm -hmm. They might get 20 grand, 30 grand for it. I'm not sure. The truck is the ideal for a trailer park. You know, That's what I, said. I told them the flat. Something flat. flat right? Something yeah. flat. You're not going to be climbing a lot of hills with it. I mean, a lot of these small contractors that plow, you know, parking lots and stuff like that, that right. truck's ideal for that. Mm -hmm. You know, there is some value in the truck. It's not. You're not going to put it up for auction. I wouldn't even suggest it. I'd get a good person to look at it that sells trucks right. and see what it's worth. Well, then perhaps we don't necessarily need a second opinion then because it's not structurally deficient. It's, I well, mean, it's not mechanically deficient. It's structurally deficient. It's well, he did indicate right? previously that it has some rust to it. No, it is, and, it's, it's, not, some it's other not rusting out. But yeah. is, you know, that, that's what happened. The yeah. hydraulic system rusted out on it and right. stuff like that. So, God knows what's going to happen down the road. Underneath, right, well, too. I mean, so. it, maybe it's still to our advantage to take it to someone else. It doesn't cost to get a single And it's it cost. David sells trucks. You know, he might give us a value of it. Right. Mm -hmm. I can answer that in you know, both ways, not just a... Right. Well, that might be good to know, too. It doesn't cost to have a second... Uh, uh, well, they're going to they're gonna go over the they're truck. Gonna, be a, they're going to be a, a charge, charge for, for, you know, how long it takes them to go over. They're going to give you an hourly rate. There's no okay. question about that. Oh, okay. Sure, well, I think it's worth it. But well, it's, it it's certainly worth it's probably worth better to yeah. spend a couple hundred and, and not have to spend a hundred figure out how much it's worth. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Well, if we can give you know, an idea. With all the equipment on it, if it's not worth it with the equipment on it, you know, some of the equipment we heard they have to stand by. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good to know that. So if we get that information, that would be helpful. Yeah, I'll make arrangements for that. Oh. Sooner the better, probably, if they're, if they're able to. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, um, he'll, he'll get it in. What else we need? Oh, um, we have... Um, and that uh, the highway department in the um, uh, 
a maintenance line for the building. We have an extra, I think it's 2,000 or 20. Yeah, building maintenance. Can we take that back down to where it was? Okay. I was going to say because you were doing that in house, you don't have to. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. That's good to know, so we can take care of that on Saturday. Yeah, we can put just take that 25 dollars. But we can take it back to the previous year. Perfect. And we talked to already about his preventive maintenance items from Great Creek Highway and Transfer Station, so we have that list. You've got your heater well. and things like that. Yep. We've got the list. Yep, we have the uh, list. It's a gas boiler, so they were in the service that last year. That's like the two weeks. Gas boilers can go a little longer. You can on an oil pipe, right? Yeah, like you can yeah. get a couple of years out of them, but two years on that side, you can stuff like that. Going on that. And he's also on septic, which we hadn't done for years. So we need to keep a yeah. regular routine on that as well as fire department right. and that was, to keep it. That was close. I can't yeah. believe the fire department made it as long as it did. I know. <laughs> but, I, you know, it did. Thank yep. you. Um, yep. One other thing. Transfer station. Let me switch gears just for a moment. Um, it was brought to our attention on Saturday that there's a desire to have some buildings and things like that to how it was recyclable. I saw an email earlier today, I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at it, about uh, like storage the storage containers. containers yeah. we, is that, is that a, an option, a viable uh, option? For the time being, it, we're not going to do the recycling per se. Okay. We need a building over the recycling to keep the snow out of them when we that much I understand, but there was supposed to be a quantum have to store. Quantum like hat would be right? to put the tires in because of mosquito. Right. So, you know. But we came up with a temporary idea for that. Eventually, down the road, quantum. We don't have to have a quantum next year. You know. Okay. That's not something we have to have next year. Okay. Building all the recycling is what we're looking for next year. That was like a wooden, a wooden, wooden building structure. that you would construct. Shorting bins. You know. Yeah. And I, okay. I understood you correctly that if we took those Jersey barriers and you were going to put them to separate your different That's products, right. Right. okay, I was wrong. Off of slide moving? Yes. Yeah, if that goes, if, if we that, do if that, we then yeah. go that route. Okay. But that would be to help, that would just make our barriers to sort, and so we can get in there with this case they're not damaged the walls and stuff. And what did we think it was going to cost to do that? $6,300, but there, How much? Six, what, to do what? No, to build your shed, it was to oh, the building? 12. We're looking around twelve thousand. Yeah, twelve. Right. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's things we can do. If we just get the roof and stuff up on it, then we can still use the can. We're trying to keep the snow out because right. we're paying the snow that, Right. So if we can get a roof up over the building this year or whatever, you know, next year, if we have the Jersey berries, we can put petitions in there and stuff. That's what we need to do. I, would, I, I, I don't believe it would be able to get on the schedule for this year. I guess it's just, okay. Next year would be a little more realistic. Than, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's stuff we're going to do ourselves. It's not something right. we're going to build. Have somebody build. It's, it's right. stuff we can do. We just got to get. You know, we got to dig a hole in the ground. Right. Get the pillars. We have a threshold. Anything over ten thousand dollars goes into the CIP, so it's it's going to be and capital and, and a capital item. That's what I mean. Yeah. There's a capital yeah. item, so yeah. it would be a separate more article. And the right. Ponza huts were a Ponza huts were for the tires and the appliances, and the appliances and to get money. one. Put them both in together, but you're going to temporarily the, the cement structure that's already the barriers that are already with it. Yeah, whether we, you know, tires and stuff. Right. Still now, it's just put a quantity hut over that to keep the water out of the tires right. and keep the mosquito. For the time being, we have the extra compact of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. That when they bought the, I guess they had two bins originally with the first compact, and right. when they bought the new one, they got an extra bin with the compact. Okay. Yeah. Well, in a year since I've been there, now that we have two, they swap them out, so we're not adding that third one in the line, we can actually open the doors on that and store the tires inside that oh, okay. for now, and that'll keep the water and stuff out of it. Perfect, okay. So we're just going to move that over to the tire area and store the tires in that for now. Okay. But, you know, ideally down the road, you're looking to, you know, eventually probably put a quantity up and keep all that stuff undercover. So it's, I mean, like the refrigerant and stuff, they've got to come in and take the refrigerant out of them, and then we are now going to take them to right. and have them. Yeah, right. How many tires are you getting? Uh, Last time we had a, it was a truck where we hauled out of there. And that was only one since I've been there. Okay. So, you know, that's why that container will probably help. You know, it's it's okay. just the state laws about yep. mosquito borne areas and you know, water gets in these things. And, 
we're, we're taking these classes and we're finding out things that probably should have been happening for a long time. And again, yeah. you know. You could stop taking the class. <laughs> happy, boy, happy not to go to class. <laughs> well. But we, there is state laws out there that we need to follow. Yes. And if and ignorance then, of the law is not an excuse. And I think that would be more so. expensive than us not doing things. So. Right, right, right. Yeah. I would imagine. All right, well, that's all good information to have to us. Thank you. Uh, does anyone else have any other questions? Sorry, I don't think that was it. Posting rights. Oh, that was it. Thank you. I didn't say that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you had mentioned, George, uh, talking about you, posting some town roads um, for, um, for waste. And I was thinking some more about that. That's a lot of time to talk. So, what road? You wouldn't go to do Jesse Joe because all, all that commercial traffic would break that down. Right? Out of the park. right? So all the other roads, though, are state roads, right? That, no, that are usually about, you know, can be found. The local road. road. Right. But I'm trying to think, there aren't a lot of local roads that you would see heavy vehicles going down, right? You wouldn't believe it. Okay, so this is what I'd like to think. Can you um, come road? up with Clement Road? Can you come up with a list for us? Like a road? Not right now, but <laughs> no, we'll we'll come up with a list of them for us so we can consider it. I think it. for the benefit of the town, is we're going to look at Dover's ordinance yeah. on 26,000 pounds or over. Right. Should not be allowed on the road unless it's local delivery. There's right. no reason not to. So, so we do have a bus company in town that um, I don't, don't travel so Well, I don't think they do either, but I, just, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, we're Clearwater, all those companies that are down. I just want to make sure that we're not. Um, no, I mean, the only time that they sneak across town, like anybody else. But you're still running heavy trucks on these roads. And it, it, well, finally, I, I was actually considering that that's one of the roads I thought well, we should are, be doing. You are beating the roads up. But, I mean, 2nd Street, 3rd Street, 4th Street probably well, doesn't need to. I'm just yeah. saying, an overall ordinance of 26,000 pounds or better are under. Unless for local deliveries, that eliminates any problem. The I'm state roads you can't control. Right. Well, that's just it. So I want. I wasn't aware that they were they were cutting down um, foundry as well. So I, I thought we I thought we had posted foundry when we did. Uh, uh, it no, was just I bare roads that we did. Mm -hmm. I think it, it is just bare roads, and then they still run over that. But at least if there's a sign, if it's posted, they can get nailed. Right. Exactly. Okay. But right. Uh, I I honestly believe. I mean, seeing the construction of some of these roads, right. the more weight you put on them, the faster they're going to deteriorate. Yes. Yeah, right. Clearly, there were different standards at different times. And, right? and that was probably everywhere, but you know, at the time it took, some towns have gone and upgraded them roads in the past. But it's just taken time to get to these things. For sure. Okay. Yeah, you know, and I noticed it in the front of the fire station, like I told you, when we dug it up and, and fixed that. So right. and we put plenty of gravel in there, so that should slow yeah, down. We, we appreciate that's, that. We really do. That's done. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. Did it today. you strike it today? I saw that. So, oh, really? Very good. It was dark by the time I got home, so but, oh, but I think uh, we'll get it maybe tomorrow. It, it, no, it's it is what it is. I mean, I, I, that's just a thought of okay, so You do just, think you do believe every single road, every town road should be. Okay. It, it does not hurt to have it. You know, yeah. if, if they do the local delivery, nothing. They're there for a reason. Yeah. Right. You know. Okay. If, if it's written as an ordinance saying no trucks over twenty six thousand pounds, right. except for local deliveries, they yeah. covers a lot. Your oil trucks are going to be over twenty six thousand. They're going to go on the road. Yeah. School buses that heavy. But there are going to be local deliveries as right. well, right? Okay. Right. We did discuss this at the uh, Highway Traffic Safety oh, good. Committee. Okay. Yeah. Um, Chief Dusham did warn that we can't just throw up a sign like on Route 4. It's, a, it's not our road. So right. posting this ordinance might become problematic because okay. a lot of the roads in and out of town are state roads. Right. 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 Almost every road. Almost all. Mm -hmm. right. um, just about. But... Yeah, no, I don't I disagree. Think, I think we can contact the state and have permission to put an advertisement at the, at our, entering our town, at each entrance of the town, saying that all, all local roads are posted with the exception of state roads. I think if you, if it depends on how it's written. It might, you know, legally, you have to, have to look at the legal side. All right, so we would work with the, the Highway Safety Committee, anyways. You're on that, right? So, you're both on that, so. Yes. All right. Or he has a representative. There is a representative so, on board, yes, there is. Anyway, so we have that covered. So 
it would be good to bring it back up there then, George, so yeah, we, can, we, we can bring a yeah, presentation, or uh, rather a recommendation to the select board then. That would be good. Only meets every couple of years from what I can tell. But Maybe we can get it on the agenda to meet once more in this decade. How's that? We can figure this out. Yeah. Okay. All right, perfect. Do we have anything else for George? I don't want to keep you longer than you need to. So anything for us? I don't think so. Uh, well, you know what? While you're here, why don't we ask? Why don't we ask while you're sitting here? I don't think so. I think uniform. No, we took care of that. Never mind. We took care of that. But then increase to cover the insurance. Oh, you go for the insurance. So that we took care of the highway. No, we finalized highway. It was, it was just uh, anything in sanitation. Yes, but it wasn't on you. It was on uh, that brief. We're waiting on some more information about um, Tipping we're good with you, George. It was all capital for you that we needed information on. So but you'll get us that info on the truck. Yeah, I will get we're that. hoping we can finalize everything on Saturday. Do you think you can get info before that? that? No, it's, it's That's what he has for Right. Well, well, fair enough. I get that. Yeah. All right. And he, and he can give us a ball back with that truck for us. That would be helpful, yeah. too. But I'd really like to know a condition and, and, and no, get the crystal sure. ball out. And Make you told the chief. We don't have a crystal ball, so we don't know how long these trucks are going to last. Mm -hmm. I just need just to what I was told. Best info possible that we can What I was told when, when I started here, we had yep. fast guys that are doing it and stuff and seeing that. So. We appreciate that. We, uh, I appreciate your help. Thank, thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. Chief, come on up. Down. Down, whichever way you want to go. Yeah. I don't really have, I came in, so there were any questions right now, I don't really have any oh. per se. Okay. Although I do have visitors to go to Caroline, whoever passes in Boulder. Sure. So yeah. Just throw it on top of this one. Or yeah. Or yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Right That's all stuff that doesn't need POs and whatnot. So okay. Sure. Okay. Right. I don't think. Firepond. We have the fire pond accessibility on Moses' car. I think we probably settled that last. We, we need to come up with a decision as to what we're going to do with um, fixing the stand pipes. So we can just keep that up. We haven't done anything to add new to add to you. You know, we were kind of, you know, last time we were in a discussion like that, we were going to do what it was CIP and exactly right, the right, right, stand right. going to be. And my suggestion was if we're going to do it, it's a CIP issue. You should be asked to. We're going to talk about the abatement because we have the, finally have the information from from um, Avatar in our folder there to talk about. That's separate from, from um, the chief, though. Um, it's still well. While you're here, though, it's still useful to us. It's still the pond. It's still we useful, whether or not the standpipe is fixed or not. It's still yes. We still have it. We can still utilize that. Should we have an incident out there? So no. That, that, we, did, that's, we did go through that. And make sure that that was something. That we could do. So, are you going to look into um, fixing or adding the standpipes in the locations in which you, you mentioned, or wait? Well, I can get you what a ballpark figure that you add mm -hmm. one of those. So we could put it into a CIP spot. or whatever? Yeah. All right, take yeah. care of that part. Because we talked about two or three different locations, right? Yeah, there's two, but then one down at the Legion okay. boat ramp, and one on the other side up by where the hydro plant is up in that area. For a brand and then new. And to fix the one at um, Lavin, Lavin, whatever it is. Lavin. Lavin, to the fix theirs, right? We're responsible, yeah, I guess right? My, my yes. Would be Well, but the yeah. mill was really the, the priority, wasn't it? You said that would be the thought. I if I had to put it that way, that would be the number one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just because of why. But I think that's, I don't know if that's ours. Or it was something we didn't even claim. I always thought that was Calvin's issue that was located on there. I don't know. I do not know we may have if it's ours or not. We may have a right of way. Yeah. That's what we had for the, um, the, uh, Dumping into the uh, to the river from our our storm, yeah, our storm water. Flow water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we have a right of way uh, 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 um, for that, but so we made for that as well. I don't know. I, I remember the spinoff for that because that was one of those three projects that you did last year or something. Right. That came in. So we should talk to and stuff. So I Ryan about that. I can't imagine that you would have any any just I mean any gripe about it. I mean, it's oh, only no. going to benefit his property. 
I mean, well, no, but it's, like, who, who has who's supposed to maintain it? And I, oh, I would. Oh. I don't know. We'd have to look at the at the deed, and it'll be on there if it says there's a right of way for the town for for this outfall and for for the standpipe. We know obviously that it's ours. And yeah. It, why he wouldn't need a right of way for his own property, right? Yeah, so we run into him regularly. He's always been super supportive of any fire department needs. So I'll just you know, pick his brain on it and say this is what. Yeah, I'm sure I'll see him. We'll see him tomorrow too. Yeah. <laughs> Try to remember to have a general conversation with him about it. Beginning this talk. Yeah, just start the process. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Us. Yeah. and I think right, Oak Street MOU. Oh, do we have anything else you want to say about standpipe? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, Oak Street. Were you still looking to talk to the chief over in? I have. You have already. So we're good with you. Yeah. Okay. And Caroline has your um, your suggested changes that you want to see. Okay, I'm sure I've taken that off. I apologize. No problem. But uh, ambulance. While you're here, uh, I'll sort of switch gears and go back to budget for a moment. We had some questions and concerns about the um, ambulance budget um, from our meeting on Saturday. I'm looking at you because I think you had most of the questions. Do you remember what they were? Oh, my question was, is, what is it, 37000 36. 36000 what exactly is that for? Because if you're, as a resident, you're required to pay the difference if your insurance doesn't pay it to New York. So yes, I do not. I'm not going to uh, yeah, I mean, it's just park out of school and something that I don't know what they're doing practice. Mm -hmm. And yes, they were 32000 the last couple of years to held that price. Budget. I went over to talk to them, and I had found out too it was going to go to 36. Mm -hmm. you know what that is? That's just what the town is paying for them to be able to respond to what you know our requirements are. This particular area, I don't, even, I don't have anything on the fire department side of things. I think I've kind of been overseeing it more by default, mm -hmm. only because it's kind of something that I do have some mm -hmm. practice with, some right. skills in. But there's nothing that I know of that's actually explained. Exactly what the ambulance service is supposed to provide, other than picking up people for medical emergencies and doing what they're supposed to do. I mean, so you had mentioned you were going to speak with them and talk about trainings that they may offer we as do part that. of our con our contract. We do that. Yeah, I have. We've done that almost bi-monthly with them. They come over to the firehouse and we do trainings with them on that's one specific topic that we'll do. But I think it was more of you reaching out to them and seeing if they would do like CPR classes for like the yeah. rec department, that sort of thing, or whoever else. I don't know. Yeah, if somebody them. needs some of the notes. Right. We've done some of those, and then right. we had a hard time getting personnel to do it. So if it popped right. up, right. I'm sure that's something that Brian over there would help us with. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's just it's, it's it's just to have the the, the ambulance and the, and the the physical vehicle where it's housed and the staff right to mm -hmm. to come over. I think that's. There's nothing else. I don't think there are any other sort of like fringe sort of benefits to, to right to go with that. I think that's just yeah, it, right? For the 36. So. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Really if you, you know, if there was that, you had the 36. You could, you know, have some sort of contract, and you could include that in it, and you will provide this. And you will right. Provide this and you will provide well, are there things that you want to see in there? Because they're they're supposed to, they're going to send us a contract before we. Well, those are some items that I would like to see. Between their um, trainings and what we do as a group, that's mm -hmm. just more of a courtesy thing, but mm -hmm. I think that's okay. something that you should be able to provide right. six training sessions a year to the fire department and let them pick the topics. We normally do. We'll, we'll do backboarding this time or we'll do uh, choking issues or you know, extrication, whatever it's going to be. Right. Um, but I think that's almost something that we should probably have in some form of documentation okay. so that they do live up to that thing in the contract. Yeah. I thought Caroline said that there was some changes that you had recommended to be changed in the contract. I mentioned some to things to Caroline. Other than that, I have not. Well, we haven't her. seen anything. We yet haven't seen them, anything. So yet. I had no no contact or anything spoken with the York representatives okay. at all. Okay. But we should so. have Mark at least review the contract before yes. any of us sign it as well. Yes, I agree. And if you have any changes in that, we'll right. be that yep, time to do it. You wanted some additional I've reporting. I've never seen one at any point. Neither have I. Since I've been. Yeah. Know, this is year six or seven since I've been in this seat, so it's like probably something we should look at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just to be a little bit more involved, it's a gray area. It's like they're on their own entity and we, they just kind of do what they want. I think if we're paying that kind of money, we should have a little bit more control and understand what they're trying to do. I think we all agree with that. What we require. We want
wanted to see reporting, additional reporting as well, right? Well, I would think you should have some sort of inclusion as far as what the responses are. I don't know how many times they're in town. Yeah. Start getting some of that data available to the community so you could use that down the road for other various things if you want to change uh, you know, contractors because basically that's what they are. Mm -hmm. And I know all you got to do is blink an eye. The American will be throwing that zero budgeting line at you again. I know mm -hmm. it's a little mm -hmm. But we all know why that's never flown. Mm -hmm. But there's also other things in the, in the, that are out there floating around. Paul Robitus, who used to, uh, we kind of started American Ambulance, yeah. he has separated from them. Oh. He's left and now he's got another group that he's trying to uh, organize and kind of filter his way back into the ambulance service again. So, and I've heard that talked a few times that, you know, maybe they have their sights set on our community to come in. And so, but I also know there's a lot of people that are in this community that don't particularly care for Mr. Robitis. So, is that friction? I know that's about being on any of us in here with you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know him at all or have any action or anything. No, and I don't either for most part. But it was, well, it was always about response time. That's all it was, and that, that's our main concern is, is response times. Mm -hmm. It's all about response times. And you're eight minutes away. And he wants to build a garage at the end of Clement Road. There you go. So and Hubbard, three, well, three, I would think. Building one on the end of the fire station. We, we, we order, <laughs> if you do that too, I think we'd probably say yes, come on over. But <laughs> right, it's a, it's a much different story when he's coming over from 108. So. Mm. Yes. York has people on site 24 7. In yes. South Burwood. Yeah, in the firehouse. Yeah. Oh, in the firehouse. In the firehouse. Yeah. In the firehouse. Yeah. So it's, it's Rollinsford, York, South Burwood. Does Elliot use them as well? Or do they have their own? Too. And yeah, Gittery. Not from South Burwick. Not from South Burwick. No. But we're all but part of this sort of. They have their own station down there. They belong to the whole thing. They're also shitters. They'll send this truck down there. Oh, they will. Yeah. Like if they get back to back calls and security, they're not going to turn any down. No. And so when that happens, their next recourse is they bring in mutual aid. Right. And it's either Dover mm -hmm. or Frisbee comes in. Mm -hmm. AMR will, like, will come in. America will come in. America will come in. Mm -hmm. and it's like they've had issues where um, they're pushing the limit a little bit more than they should as far as not their coverage, not, mm -hmm. not staying. Does, not their so coverage. is Dover the only department in, in, in Durham, I guess, or McGregor? Are they the only two that have their own ambulance for Okay. In service area. within the department? In this area. Everything else is private. Yeah, Frisbee runs it up or in Rochester. Profit. And, right. And, and, uh, and that's how McGregor runs it over there for Durham. But if you go down, oh. you know, Dover has their own within the firehouse, and you have to go further south. Like, sir, does their own that way. Oh. Portsmouth does their own that way. Right. The bigger communities do. Right. McGregor is private, isn't it? What's that? McGregor is private, isn't it? Well, yeah, they're not part of it. They are private. They're not part of the Dover. No, they're their own entity. would like to see the whole their whole budget and see what percentage we pay versus South Burrock, too. Sure. They, you when, know, when we you first know. had, the, the, um, when they first came to us, to, when they reorganized mm -hmm. as the, this new nonprofit, they did do this presentation to the board and yeah. they did show us what, I don't remember at this point, but what was the percentage that we would pay versus South Burrock and all the other towns. Mm -hmm. um, it would be beneficial, I think, to have them come and do that presentation again. Mm -hmm. We've been asking them, though, for you know, months now for this contract, mm -hmm. and we finally got a dollar amount from was it, last week, the week before last. So they have not been. We're a volunteer board, right? That has not um, not been equipped with this to respond. I should say that. And I would say they're not they're non-responsive. Is that they're just not. Yeah, you want to see it yeah. more time in batch, and yeah. what you guys need to accomplish. Right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because you didn't have a number, I had to go over and kind of beat on them for that. Right. And it was a little bit while before they didn't give you that. Right. And they haven't really given you the, the full package yet. No. So it's like, they don't have a contract yet. Right, right, exactly. And we need to, at this point, I mean, I, I think we're, as I, say, I will say this, I think we're pretty much stuck for this year. Mm -hmm. so I don't see us. It's just a one year thing this time. No, it's a two-year, two but, but it's contingent upon funding, so, um, but it might be, be time to, to look again into what other options are out there. Yeah. Um, maybe they still are the best option? I don't know. Well, I to me, it's... It doesn't hurt to look. Right. It's not 
paying nothing is very attractive. But, I, you know, is someone's life worth $36,000? Probably. You know, versus paying nothing and they're not getting their time? I don't know. So, but that's how what we, we aired on that side the last time. I mean, that was, it was unanimous. So, um, but if we're not getting the level of service, and we may be, but I don't think we know, really, if we're, if we're getting the level of service we expect. Well, I mean, I don't know either, because there's times that we'll go on calls with them at night, in the middle of the night or something like that. I guess I'm spoiled because I came from some place where it was 24-7 paramedic coverage. They don't provide that. They don't have the, you know, the qualified people and the manpower to fill that. So there'll be times when they show up with just two basics. I have more people with more qualifications in the fire department, and sometimes an ambulance shows up with their ski level. All right. So they're just drivers at that point? Just a basic EMT. It's a little great because if there's something that somebody needs to have done as an advanced, those guys really don't have the ability to so jump in here and do it because they're on the base. If they're at the A level, the advanced level, and that would be fine. You can cross over and you can work with them under their licensure, but you can't do it as a basic. So there's a little bit of, well, we're going to do it just because somebody has to say some of life, right? Exactly. So in the event that you, because most of the time you know what the call is, in the event that it was a heart attack, and you know that they only have basics on on a Sunday night or whatever night it is, wouldn't you call mutual aid would, from Joe? I don't work okay. when I call. All right. But I don't know that you get that. Even though that it goes out and occasionally and says that what, it, what the call is. Yeah, and I know what the call is. I know what the nature of the call is, but I do not know what the ambulance is bringing over. Oh, oh, you don't know what the ambulance is bringing I don't know what their uh, qualifications are on, I a, on a daily or shift to hourly basis. I don't know that. So it's True. Been. I know the majority of them. Mm -hmm. So when they come through the door, they fill some patients, and they still bring in some of the people from other agencies that work and fill in their open spots. Mm -hmm. So I don't always know that. So I say, what level are you at? Mm -hmm. We're both basic. Do you want to send that out to the yeah. next door neighbor over here? Mm -hmm. We need them now. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of one of the first things that's not only needed to the other officers. It's like, well, they show up, I know what level of care they provide. Well, they also need to be part of their contract to tell us. Right. If it's if you don't have a paramedic, the contract needs to say we will tell you before we head out. We don't have right. a paramedic on duty. Right, and that's I mean, one, one that way, then you can make another call, yeah. and they can both respond. And you know, it's not only us that should do that. If they're coming to that, they should be initiating that on their own. It should not have to wait till the fire department gets there. No, I'm just saying. Right. The contract should say if you don't have level paramedic yeah. for a call that requires it, We're they still, must call us. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So then you Again, can. There's a contract can, issue that you would have right. to address. Yeah. There's still issues with them, even the, the South Fork Fire, where they've switched to Sanford for their dispatch. There's still some peak dragging being done there, and I've already had numerous conversations with mm -hmm. Sanford Dispatch. You need to do it this way in order to get the fire department dispatched with the ambulance. Mm -hmm. right. Sanford doesn't doesn't understand that yet. It's coming. Mm -hmm. But Sanford runs their own ambulance too, so they understand that part. Apply what you do there. To this scenario here, mm -hmm. and everything will be good. But yeah. it's, it's a slow process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sometimes we should have started much sooner than we have done. It's like, oh, really? And some of that's a spillover effect that their ambulance never went with software fire. Mm -hmm. They don't do medical aids in software right. fire. So it's that trying to fill that gap on our side. Yeah. It's getting there. It's just slow. It's interesting. <laughs> All right. Any other questions for the chief? Yeah. I have one. Um, I've been trying to get a preventive maintenance program to go on, and I would like to ask if you could review what you have in the fire station and give me a list so then we know what we have to address for um, preventive maintenance. Well, like what? yearly, like furnaces, like oh. septic, like, um, I don't know what else you have. Building like maintenance. Building That's maintenance, so you know, um, your, your doors, you know. Um, I think you're part of George when he has his, right? You're part of that we, contract. The town had a contract, but I don't think it got renewed. Yeah. Oh. We had it for like a year or two, and each each department paid their portion, basically yeah. dependent on how many doors you had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this last year, I got the numbers from, uh, from Caroline, and just, yeah, just tell me so I can put it in my budget. Yeah. And it was past the point where the contract was not renewed. So I don't think there is one for doors right now. Oh, okay, because George doesn't know that because he told me there was, and then we found out tonight Bobby's not part of that either. So, yeah, so, so that's what we're looking at. That's why we, preventive maintenance kind of came Because that kind of came from the fire department.
we started that yeah. a couple Definitely. years ago. Because we got so many of them, it's so I old that it's we right always right have now. an issue with the thing. So you know, it was like seven or eight hundred bucks for our annual. Yeah. But if they come in and took care of you, it was more than worth that. You have one spring leg, one year, a thousand dollars right there. Yeah. Plus their time, so it was, it was beneficial to do that. And, well, Bobby has what one door. Two, one on that salad. One on the salad. Yeah. Just one on the salad. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But he was just asking. That I got the six up there, and George go up four. Yeah. yeah. Not counting the transfer station yeah. if he includes any of those. So. So we definitely should be looking into that. Yeah, it was the only door we had it with, and I just think it kind of just drifted away. Who was it? Yeah. Where the fire? What's that? Who was it? Where the fire? Haley door. Haley. H a l e y. Haley door. The, um, the other is your generator. Has that ever been serviced? Mm -hmm. It has? Yeah. Okay. How often does that get serviced? Yeah. It's not annual, but it's something that should be done. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. Looking yeah. Well, the boiler's done every year. The generator's another thing that we should have taken care of. There's not a lot of other stuff outside of that. Well, you so. want to make your septic more than once every 25 years. Yeah. He probably does too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last time that was. Actually, last time it was serviced. That wasn't bad a couple years ago. Well, we were trying to run fix the floor drains. Mm -hmm. And they came in and they ran a one of their snakes through there and it wouldn't go past up where the tank truck is parked because it's a kind of a dry well on the other side. Oh, yeah. On the baseball field yeah. side. And then while all that was being done we had an issue in the bathroom so they did the same thing. That actually got pumped. Mm -hmm. But it was hard to find that because nobody knew where it was. But uh, we finally did find what the septic tank is. But there's a dry well where all the floor drains go into. Oh. Way, way, way back when. Wow. But they don't always flow there because I think that the pipe that leads to that on the baseball field side has been crushed, damaged, deteriorated, whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's something that maybe something George helps us with down yeah, the road. Maybe. Down the road. Yeah. Try to dig it up right. and find out where it is. But yeah, there's a lot of things like that. Yeah, so if you can no just. Yeah, if you can just kind of maybe run me down a list of, of the things. If you think of something else that you know of, then I'm not getting. So no, I'm going to kind of like get them all into the. There. Yeah. Um, get them all on a, on the list. I didn't know your furnace was done, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. every year we get that done. Yeah. Well, so said, Caroline knows that because it goes through Townsend. Yeah, so yeah know, that's about what I said too. I know George does his and he takes care of this building, so that gets an annual service. Good. That's good to know. Yes, yeah, I do know. Okay. Perfect. I just want to make sure all of it starts to... Me too. Yeah. <laughs> usually at some point during the year when we have them in there because it's not running dry here. It was last year that the one in the new bay was just deteriorated and due to lack of maintenance. Yeah, so they had to have the new key. Up. We have a lot of assets that we need to make sure they're working. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I understand that. We're talking strictly building, though, not trucks. Right. Strictly right. building. Yes. You know, so. That's one of the last things right there was all the last inspections and services, so they're all up and start ready to go. So we're awesome. good. Do we have anything else for the fire chief? I want to thank your department for putting out the tree fire on Bear Road on Saturday. I was quite surprised to go out on the dog walk and see a tree and free on fire. Oh, yeah. it, it was on the power lines. Oh, wow. Ignited. Yeah, yeah they, were um, they were there. They were there. They came around, around four. Time. Typically, it's quicker there. It'll 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Time ever since really. we got there. And that's just, there was a little bit of a miscommunication. We get, uh, before any storm, we get notification from Eversource and we have a priority list on how you grade your calls sure. you know, for them to be able to respond yeah. to it. And this one should have been graded a little higher so they'll get here really quick. Uh, and I don't, I will say right out of the gate, I embellish it a little bit so they will get here. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you wait a long time in this time because we're not a priority. Nah. So we kind of work on it to get to that point. But if you have fire, it's a main road, it's threatening a house, it's yeah. threatening other issues, you can. Yeah, that much right. They gotta know. Yes. The thing. Right. Um, amazingly, we didn't lose power until they had to untangle the tree. The tree. Really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> didn't it burn down and drop? I mean, didn't no, it? No, it smoldered. It hung like, up. It hung up. It hung wire. Yeah. Oh. But it was. There were flames. Oh yeah, that's yeah. I, I heard. Yeah, that. the tree was in oh, and we that? lost power. Bear Road down into the ground. We so were, you live on Bear Road? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was at the Carmer's house. I'm two doors down. By Cushman? Next to the Cushmans, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I remember that. I like to know where all you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> so I know where I'm going. Who I'm dealing with. It's a proper thing to do. Well, we
we hope we never yeah. have to see you perfect. Yeah, that was in the yeah. Yeah. You know, those things do happen, especially on Bear Road. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's good for 50 calls a year, Bear Road. <laughs> that's just the way it is. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Very nice. Good. 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 All right, so the bookkeeper clerical support applications, we have um, quite a few of them. Yep. Caroline has come up with a spreadsheet uh, for us to review. Um, she's going to um, go over her, um, her point system that she designed to each yep. applicant, which I think is going to be very useful uh, mm -hmm. to me tomorrow. Okay. Well, um, so won't be a complete waste of the day. Uh, well, so what time, time do you have a time set? So Why? What she said. Whenever she comes down to vote, she will, okay. If it's not busy at the time, she she's gonna sit down and talk, and then if it is, then she'll come back. She said. So. Okay. But I'll be there uh, from seven to nine. I've got to pass out ballots. Apparently, so whoever was supposed to do it has fallen through. So I'm, I'm the guy that passes out the ballots in the morning. I won't so. be there until yes. after work, but I will be there. Okay. And you're gonna come down when you can get it after. Yeah. Leave. Okay. All right, so the select board will be represented anyways. So, anyways, the point is we have a lot of applicants, which is wonderful. Not all applicants are created equally. Um, so, um, some of them have absolutely no accounting experience. Yes, yeah, so they would not get many high points I mean, from what the rudimentary uh, knowledge I have of the scale. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to explain it all to me in detail tomorrow. But um, the good news is there's interest, mm -hmm. so we will see. And hopefully we can have... Um, uh, a list of uh, folks for next Monday that we can start vetting. Okay, so, okay. Uh, that's good news. Budget planning. So we've got quite a few answers tonight to some of our questions. I don't know the biggest items we have outstanding. CIP, mm -hmm. which we still have outstanding questions, and George is going to work on them for us. So we can't really take that up tonight. And we need to wait on that. Uh, the other really big thing we're waiting on is um, we didn't do that. Did we, uh, we didn't finalize government buildings because we wanted some of the information tonight on uh, preventative maintenance. Mm -hmm. I think we got some of it. Um, I want to know about the garage doors though, mm -hmm. uh, that, that contract. So I don't really want to take that up with that until right, we get that information. And the other large, the fire, right? the fire, the mm -hmm. other big thing we have outstanding is um, sanitation. We're waiting on those numbers from Lampert. We haven't received. Well, them. I'm going to yeah. be working on the tonnage stuff at tomorrow. Tomorrow at the. Uh, so we can't really take that up tonight either. Well, no. I guess this is my long-winded way of saying that I don't think we can we'll really take up the budget tonight because we have some outstanding questions that we need answered on. Uh, we will have the answers for on Saturday. Though. Yep. Which is a good thing, and if we the quicker we do it on Saturday, the better. I think. Mm -hmm. Unless there's objections, we will move on then. Mm -hmm. Budget committee secretary posting is not so good. We haven't had a single person um, apply, so I've um, I would suggest we might want to look at the posting again, repost it, and put a dollar amount. It's on Indeed, or oh, yes, I, I think so. Yeah. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Indeed, and. Um, the uh, Municipal Association has a post uh, board that we can post to as part of our meetings. I think it went out email-wise through the town. To the town yeah. as well, too. Yeah. So, I th what, I'm trying to remember what the dollar amount was that we said. We talked about this. I thought this. it was 11. I think no, so as well, right? Okay. It had been 10 and chain. 1071, mm -hmm. maybe? Yeah, 1061. Yeah, something, some, something like that. So, I would suggest we, we post it. Um, when we repost it, rather, when we were working on our on the budget, did we was this one of the positions that we raised up to twelve dollars an hour, or that no, that was that's, so just, that's only uh, planning and CBA, right? CBA. Because of the added responsibilities. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we should we should um, we didn't put a dollar amount in the last time, so we should put in you know uh, up to depending. Uh, 11, up to eleven dollars an hour, depending on experience or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. Have Caroline repost it. Mm -hmm. Is there any objection to, to that? Mm -hmm. right, so I'll let her know. Uh, what is it? Because they have meetings coming up soon. So, 
So it's going to take the minutes. It's not fair to ask a, uh, a member of the, of the community to do it because they want to be participating. And, and, you know, and it's hard to participate while you're sitting there taking notes. Newsletter. We have uh, a newsletter. I have had a chance to look over it earlier today. I think for the most part it looks great. I know there's a couple of small issues. Um, I want to rework um, the um, SB2 section the, the, in the second paragraph. I want to change the second sentence a little bit. I know, sorry, the third sentence. My fault. Yeah, I was just going to say that. And the other thing is um, um, the wrong for Explorer post. We might need to cut that. And I th think, though, uh, the only other thing I could think of, Salme, it looks great, first of all. Was, yeah? It needs to be printed tomorrow. Okay, so... I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll do some wordsmithing in just a moment, but I didn't want to forget. The only other thing was, did we run by the um, the, the town hall hours, the clerk's hours with the clerk? It says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 to 1, asterisk, uh, closed Fridays, July and September. Was she still in holidays? July through September. That's right, man, yeah. Uh, is she still intending to do that? Do we know? Oh, yes. Okay, well, I just, I, okay. I'm not I'm not arguing for or against. I just want to make sure that we have it in, we have it in here accurately. I think that was the only thing I didn't. Denise found the thing with the fire explorers. Um, we can find that out in the morning, though. I think. Alice, do you know um, what Dave know? Yeah, I'll call. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna, we're going to ask our our colleague to call a member of, that she knows. Slightly. Oh, the issue of a friend <laughs> on the fire <laughs> department and ask real quick. So let's do some word smithing. So where it says, uh, the first deliberative session is scheduled for 9 a.m. Saturday, February 2nd, 2019. Uh, this is the closest equivalent to town meeting you were used to. Um, so it, I think it should say, this will be, this will be your opportunity to offer amendments to the proposed operating budget and war articles, much like you would at, would have at town meeting. I think it's. Do I? I'm gonna say. I, I, do you want well, me to write it down? You're gonna have to go. Let's go. Okay, that's fine. Okay. This will be. The, uh, this will be your opportunity. to voice your opinion and offer amendments that all stays the same. Mm -hmm. and that's it. That's the only thing I, I thought needed to be changed. I thought it looked good. What is it? So, just so. adding opportunity. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It wasn't a major change. It was a, hey, this Jeff, it's Denise Knowles. Hi there. I just want a confirmation. Yeah. We're we're talking about the Salmon Falls quarterly. That's, that's that one right here. Yeah, I knew you were going to change. Yeah. So I, I see uh, about the inventory of taxable property. Mm -hmm. We're so also so you want eliminating that taken the. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah. Oh. Okay. They're done, Salme. So we need to take that out. Okay. Okay, so this is what I suggested, Denise, just so we're on the same page. Um, let me change. Um, this will be your opportunity to, to voice your opinion and offer amendments to the proposal. Just okay. Take that. This will be your opportunity. Okay. Yeah, this will also work out. Okay. Other than that, um, the only other thing, so we're going to take out the, the um, explorers, or whatever mm -hmm. my mind is. That's unfortunate, but that was a 
great opportunity, but it is what it is. Um, I love the yay less paperwork. I, is there any other way we can... Oh, you're not going to be changing anything around. No, okay, I'm not. That's it's perfect right where it is. This is the layout, that's fine. You know what, we're at the 11th hour. I don't want to change the layout then. Is there any way we can just make it... Can we bold that entire sentence? Just so it's, it just feels like it gets lost down there. Well, maybe uh, well why don't I, I bold that inventory of taxable property? Perfect. Okay. Just so it sort of pops yeah. out a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So, folks. Um, you want it in caps, like the transfer, transfer station stickers? Um, where. Oh. Um, if you think it will fit. Yeah, I'm not positive that it will. If not, maybe just make it bold so people will yeah. just see. Them. I know when I looked at it online, um, oh, well, online granted it was on a screen, so it kind it, of got it wasn't. But, I don't know, do yeah, folks think it doesn't get lost? Formatted. I don't know, at the bottom of the page? I mean, what? the format was online. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. it was, really. I couldn't get that one to change anything. Yeah, this, the it this was. looks good. Maybe, so, so, maybe, so it says, as of 2019, comma, inventory of taxable property, and you've got the number of the form, which is good. Um, can we write inventory of taxable property in a PA 28, but then write forms are no longer required? Will fit in everything? The word forms? Yep. Okay. That way, because um, I don't, I mean, I don't know if everyone will know. If, if they think the inventory of taxable property, and they see forms, maybe they'll, I don't know, maybe it will jog a little bit more in their minds. I, mean, I don't even know if people will even remember, but still, it's good that we add that in there. Is there anything else in here that we think needs to be changed? Again, I, thank you so much for putting this together. It looks, I think it looks great. I think you did a, a great job getting um, a lot of information on a page where it doesn't get, isn't too overwhelming. It's nice that we have all the, the community events and things going on. It's nice. I'll give folks just another moment to take your time. So November 17th, all this stuff is happening? Yes. Oh my god. November 17th. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's a busy day that day, huh? Oh, um, busy weekend, actually. It's so much. Half of it is weekend. Yeah. Oh, some of it is. Like public studios yep. and. The town map resources. Mm -hmm. Then the rest of it is just the same thing. That's a bigger weekend. That's great. Yeah, actually, so the Jazz Age Soiree, the Arch Dinner, is their theme this year. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to buy a table, and we're not going to be here. Oh. So I know Suzanne and I usually buy a table together, and then folks sit in with us. Um, if anyone wants to buy a table with her, <laughs> I'll reach out to her and let her know because I, I, I can't go now, so I feel bad, but we're going to be out of town. But um, other than that, I think it looks great. Do you have any changes, Denise? Mm -mm. Miles, are we yeah. good? I think we're good, yeah. All right, let's, we'll put it to bed. Thank you, Simon. Keep did another great job. Appreciate it. Oh, boy. What? Well, I was just... <laughs> no, no, yes. Was, I was going to the printer after I walked in the morning, yeah. but now I'm going you to be go. at the you Legion do that thing for Wendy. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, fire upon abatement is in one of our folders. Probably for signature. Mr. Lab and finally know what the decision will be. Yeah.
Chad got back and had us some information for the abatement. Um, there are, we'll find it here. Okay. After a meeting with Mr. Lever discussing the fire upon easement and subsequent research and confirmation, I recommend lower the condition of excess acreage to 50 due to wet and easement to town fire rescue. Furthermore, I review the conditions placed on the many garages on the property and find that the contrib contribution contributory value overstated due to size and an already attached garage. I recommend lowering all garage conditions to 100. I'm sure that means something. That doesn't mean anything to me. The above adjustments correspond to a revised value of 794,100, which represents a difference of 52. Thousand two hundred for which I recommend an abatement be granted. So basically, he's saying there's the fire pond, there's the wetlands, um, and the garages that the um, assessors that went out and looked at them assumed that there were people living in them. And there are, oh. after actually going over and looking at them, there are not anyone. There is not anyone living in them. There are just garages for whatever you know. he has. Maybe he's in a boat or something. I don't know. So the chat is that they've over. They over assess the property, so it should truly be changed. So our, um, we would owe them then a check of $1,279.20. And I suggest if we're going to do it, we sign it tonight so we can send it out so that the new amount goes on to the tax bill so we don't have to get penalized. We, the town doesn't get penalized with additional uh, interest. If we don't, if we're going to grant this, we need to do it tonight so we don't get penalized any further. But we are allowed to discuss this if we'd like to. If folks have uh, concerns about renting the abatement. Can I see it for a Of course, yeah, sorry. Right there. What was the, the tax bill by 1200 I mean, I know we owe them 1200 Yes. Well, it would be a, probably less than that because of interest. I, don't, I didn't look to see if it's broken up by. Okay. What the amount is and what the interest amount is. It might be on the last page. I don't know see. That come out of contingency or some other such. It will come out of um, out of the uh, out of um, the general fund from somewhere. If there's money in yes, if there's still money in contingency, it would come out of there. But if not, it will have to come out of somewhere else within the okay. when the offering budget. I guess the easy answer is yes. Contingency. Where should come out of? My thoughts are that, I mean, at first with, with the with the issue of the of the um, pond, and it was a requirement of the subdivision moving forward. I mean, they obviously purchased the property with it on there, and the understanding that it was a pond for, for that purpose. Mark tells us that the standpipe is not operational. That's really the town's fault that the town didn't maintain their standpipes. That they were, it, clearly, it's not theirs. The lab, the owner. Because there's a easement, there's a right of way for the town, right? So we should have been maintaining these. We can add that to the laundry list of things we're supposed to be maintaining that we may or may not have known about, but we do now, I guess. Um, so, and he can still draw water, he said, from it. So it's an operation, that's why I want to know is it still of use to the Rollinsford Fire Department as a fire pond? He says yes. That's, that's the bulk of it, and that's the biggest piece of the. Of the abatement. The other piece is the smaller, minor piece of um, them not knowing that. Yes, yes there's not like a, an apartment complex in the garage. There are other places in town where there are, but he's not one of them. So, that's just my, my thoughts on why we would probably want to rent this. Yeah, so, so, one from 846 300 to 794 100. Right. Uh, would, yeah. Of the assessed value, right. Yep. Okay. So that would be equal to 52,200. Uh, 52, no, my, my only concern is that we don't know if the other people who have so-called fire ponds are getting abatements because of them. Correct. That, that's a concern for me. But. That is uh, also something that I mentioned when um, I was told that this had shown up today. Well, we would be seeing it tonight, but... Um, 
I believe that the onus is on the owner of those properties to be asking for when they get their assessments to make sure that they're getting an abatement for an easement on their property. I know if I own a piece of property, if I owned, God help me if I ever owned the giant piece of property Mr. Lavin owns at the end of uh, whatever it is, Moses' car, um, I would be looking for every nickel and time to save two because it's a huge piece of property. And I would have been asking about it. I, I just recently, no, around this past summer, looked at a piece of property here in town. It's got six um, uh, bedrooms in it, but they're only they only listed as a three bedroom because there's no heat or anything up, up on the <laughs> third floor of this house. So it's not finished. So mm. to which I said, looked at their tax card and said to myself, well, "It's a beautiful house, but they're being taxed on these three bedrooms that don't." Uh, have any heat. I don't understand why they never ask for an abatement. So really it is on the property owner to be paying attention to these things. Not up to the town to, to we send the assessors out, the assessors do the best they can and if uh, sometimes they make mistakes. Which is why you should always let the assessors in your own say look. Because they look through the window and they think you've ran up the comic crops and really they're for mica. And it happens. I guess lots of people come tell us that so so I, I, I don't know if anyone else has any more to say, we should certainly say it now. If not, we should probably sign this and get this taken care of because I don't want to pay these people any more interest than we already have. So, personally. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm in agreement. Denise, what do you think before I sign it? Well, we're all going to sign it, actually. So. We all have to sign it? If you are not in agreement, you do not have to sign it, actually. It takes two people to um, grant the abatement. So I'm going to put my signature on it, and I'm going to pass it around, and if I'm the only person who signs it, well, then they don't get it. How that would pass in the book. <laughs> but that's how it goes. I mean, we, all, we all hang together, so we don't hang separately on this one. I do have to sign the letter on That way I sign on my own. This is AHS recommendation. Correct. That we that we send that off to off to the property owner. I should have said this too. We don't have to follow the recommendation of the uh, uh, assessor. That's what we typically say. Every well, time. I, I I don't feel qualified to assess it on my own. So you don't have to. Really, you don't have to. We don't want to. I just hope that. Going forward, if we have someone who approaches us, we treat them yeah. the same. Oh yeah, we, of course we should. And that's. I don't have any any relations with. I don't know these people. No, 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 no. I didn't imply that. I'm just saying it's, we just have to make sure it's documented that that's what's yeah. happening. So if if you know. if people have these on their property and they they've been assessed for having a waterfront property, yeah. I don't know how. I, I mean, the only kind of. I, laughing at him a little bit. I kind of feel bad at him because I shouldn't be laughing at the man, but I mean, I grew up on, on, the, on the other street that's connected to this and always gone around the circle on my bicycle when I was a kid and in much better shape. And it's like they have beachfront property because the entire front lawn of this property just floods. And it looks like there's a lake there. So, uh, so um, certain, certain times of year they probably have a lot more water in the fire pond, but anyways. Okay, so that's taken care of. Bus stop on the upper mill. We want to discuss that. We want to table for now. I haven't heard Have back you sent from the. Uh, yeah, I emailed. Uh, I emailed Judy. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I'll follow up. With well, I'll see her tomorrow too. But I'll email. Her. Uh, Rick, any you updates? Know, I'll, I'll okay. Email D and get an update. Table that then. Board member activities and updates. What do we have going on this week? Tomorrow we'll be at town. We do. Elections, we have elections tomorrow. Saturday. But that's all I have. That's enough, off, isn't it? Yeah. That's enough. And I have, excuse me, historical committee on Wednesday, I think. I think it's Wednesday. Right in this very room. My phone would open up. And the 
last Friday, I forgot to mention you all, I had a Strapper Regional Planning Commission meeting, but I don't have any uh, technical assistance committee, but there's no update to really give. It was about um, scoring of projects um, that don't have anything to do with us, actually. If we ever get on the, um, actually no, that won't be scored either. I was going to say the Portland Ave project, but it wouldn't. That's going to be a 10-year highway plan. These are for federal grants. It's loads of fun. I just opened the wrong thing. I think it's just a uh, historical committee on Wednesday, and I think that's it. That seems like enough to me. All right. Building permits. So we have two burial deeds, um, deeds for burial lots. Mm -hmm. Do I have to give names? Or so do I, just, I think what we usually do, to? we go, um, we have um, a deed of burial lot number NT18-10 oh. okay. to the uh, Baroder, I think that's the mm -hmm. family, B-R-O-D-E-U-R, -E yeah. in the amount of $350 for four lots, which is a mouthful, but then we just sign it. Four plots, not lots. Four plots, right? Yeah. Total cost of a lot, yeah, four plots in a lot. In a lot, one lot. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, four, four, four graves, one lot. One, yeah. $350. But it's usually $175. For but four? They turned in two. Oh yeah, I have another one that's a different name. What? Well, these people were buying four more, and it cost three hundred and fifty dollars. How much is a lot? It's usually one seventy-five. Per lot? Uh, per um, plot? I know it's one fifty mm -hmm. on this one. Mm -hmm. For one. Maybe it depends on where it is. I don't room. know. I leave that up to the cemetery trustees. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I do not know. It's all good. Check and see if it's cremation versus burial. In section L one zero two zero zero three B, I haven't any idea. Mm. I don't know. We have to. I have never second guessed the cemetery trustees and their selling of plots, so I'm not gonna. We all have to sign. We all three sign. Oh, well. All right. Yeah, we'll come back to you. So. Yeah, and so then. I have another one for $150 uh, for one cremation area, um, NT18-09. Does it say this cremation area? I didn't look down there. No, $350. Pre 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 NT18-09. No, this is just a transfer of space. Because it says they're going Look at the note in the very bottom. Okay, now, 350 perpetual care paid in 2002 for lot 12-021D, transferred to lot, uh, transferred to the lot that was just purchased. So, mm -hmm. this isn't actually, it says that this purchase of four lot, of four braves, total cost of lot, $350. So, really, they're just transferring the perpetual care? Well, that's what it says on the note, anyways, so that makes more sense. All right, well, so they, it says something different up here about the notes. Maybe this is just boilerplate that they use up here. Um, so this one was for a cremation lot? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Building permit 2018-110 for on Calvin Drive for 155 uh, rooftop, a solar rooftop. Approved by um, Tom Clark. Okay, so 
2018-110-13 Kenwin Drive. 155 has been reviewed by Mr. Clark. All right, so we will... Okay, how much money? 155. Two zero one eight dash one one one, Kelvin Drive, for rooftop solar, for one hundred and fifteen dollars. Approved by Tom Clark. They're both the same. Both thirteen Kelvin Drive. They both thirteen. Yeah. It's a, it's two separate. One for the electrician, one for the contractor. Oh, there. sorry. No, no, that's okay. That's Building permit 2018-109, 24 Cricket Lane, for a storage shed, value of $2,700, the fee is $55, Tom Clark is All right. Building permit 2018-105, um, 464 Foundry Street, um, town of Ronald. Oh, this is a, this is a, it's the garden club. They're having a um, shed put down, and they don't get charged anything. It's not applicable, right? They're a, they're a town uh, but, uh, entity. Yeah, no, uh, so, yeah. We don't typically charge it. So, Mr. Clark has reviewed it at least. So yes, he has. We know where it's going, so it's mm -hmm. um, they're putting a new shed in that they've clearly raised money for. The value of the shed is twenty-two hundred dollars. All right. So we could. It's on town property, but we wouldn't charge. Building permit two zero one eight dash one zero eight. 546 Portland Avenue, electrical for, I'm assuming, de detached garage, DET, detached, yeah, is that it? Right? So. Okay. Uh, value is $2,000. The fee is 90 approved by Tom Park. Building permit 2018-016, 644 Silver Street, um, build an 8 foot by 22 foot farmer's porch, see plans and email the details. Value $11,000, fee is $135, Tom Clark has approved. And what was the number on that one? 2018-016. Silver. Certificate of Occupancy 2018-020, um, 80 Roberts Road, Tom Clark has approved. So it's a Certificate of Occupancy for 80 Roberts Road, been reviewed by Mr. Clark, and we will approve it unless there's objection. Mm -hmm. no. That's a $50 fee sign. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right, correspondence. Ah, uh, we almost got it. Oh, that's me again. I know, that's why I don't, I don't know. know why I have Miles is supposed to have that folder, but that's wanted, okay. All right, here, Miles. Ah. I have to still sign here. Yes. We try to divvy up the work. Oops. I don't know. They all get dumped, the dumped in though. front of you, sorry. Sign uh, oh, to Gail Ann St. Hilaire. Uh, the select board approves uh, the St. Mary's Church Fair oh, yeah. um, to be held on November 17th. Because, as part of um, town ordinances, people that want to hold fairs and things like that, they have to have approval of the select board. Is this new? No. <laughs> is it old? Well, listen, you were apparently in violation <laughs> apparently, of St. Anne's Guild over there, so. <laughs> no, 
I mean, when I did it the fire department. Oh, the fire department? Well, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's like a, wow. like a, a hawker's license, because they'll have like raffles and things. Oh, wow. it's, it, I'm sure it's a state law that requires it, actually. So, I mean, we can just come up with it on our own. But of course we would grant it. I don't know why we wouldn't. Okay. And well, wish them luck on their fair. When is it? The 17th. It's 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 coming, weeks. One of those things is coming up yeah. on the uh, 17th. That I'm going to miss. Miles needs it. Echo back in that one. Okay. Uh, so there's a letter looking for your signature from NRRA, Northeast Resource Recovery Association. Um, is uh, oh, delivering glass to waste management in New Hampshire tree facility. And I guess this is just confirming our membership in that association. Oh, it says right. Okay. Yeah, so uh, there was a, a different place to, to send a glass. Um, it was cheaper than going yeah. to um, Wakefield. So it's like it's $35 a ton. So because we get a, a, a cheaper rate because we're members of the NRRA. So we just have to uh, sign this as we are, in fact, members of the NRRA. So they can give us that rate. So if there's no objection, I'm going to sign off as we are the member. Uh, none here. All right. means we pay for the glass rather than get money for the glass. The waste management of the New Hampshire Tree Facility hosts a will accept mixed glass jars, bottles, containers from NRRA members that meet specifications Call them ahead of time. Let them know. Full con weigh full containers at host site scales. All incoming loads are to be inspected at the site in Rochester. So once inspected, loads can be dumped in the glass pile site. Scan or fix. NRRA members delivered to the host site agree to look, take back equal amount of crushed material to the amount of uncrushed glass it deposited at the site in the event the host site does not have a use for it. NRRA will invoice members at $35 a ton. Oh, they have to take it back. That's what that is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. To get be able to deposit this site, I guess it's uh, maybe members. This makes sense. Not to deliver to the host site, we're going to take back an equal amount of crushed material for the amount of uncrushed glass it deposited. We have to take back mm -hmm. crushed glass. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, it does not have a use for it in any one year, it needs to be removed from the site. take it to use to mix with gravel so for yeah. paving projects. So mm -hmm. I think they do want it. They do want it. So all right, well
covered lives here in town. So, is there any objection to her continuing on doing it? No. Nope. Same place I went to last time? Yeah. All right, then I can do it, yes. I don't want to drive to Manchester for instance, but uh, Pembroke is next door to Concord, so yes, I'm from, or Allenstown, I think, technically, but which is part of Pembroke. But, yes, or so, I think by the end of the day. On Tuesday? We'll have tomorrow. it? Tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. And you'll be here tomorrow night, so. I'm um, not, well, I won't be here, I'll be. Well, they are. I'm not going anywhere until after the polls are closed and the ballots are counted. So I will Unless figure out a way to get it to you. But yeah. you have to get the envelopes as well, and they are here. I don't know where. Hmm. Well then, are we sure about that? Yes, okay. I was told today. Oh, all right. Well, then they need to figure out how to get it to me. I'll be happy to. Ferry them over there, but. Yeah, I'll tell Caroline. Okay. We'll be a captive audience of one at the Legion all day tomorrow, so. I had another thing. Denise, why didn't you write a policy about, like, the abatement? When people have abatement requests, they'll all be treated equally. Or I think that's already the standard that everyone is treated equally. You know? We don't have to. Uh, we don't have different standards for different residents for whether or not we grant abatement. It's based on the, the facts of the <coughs> case of the property. Or something. It's more of in the in the hands of the company that we rely on, right? It's not necessarily us saying we're not going to. I guess if two of us don't sign it, then it is case by case. But no, I agree. The, People should be treated. For sure. I don't know why we wouldn't. But people come to us for abatement. We don't. That's the standard. The municipalities don't go to other people looking for to grant abatement. People have to come to us to ask for them. So. But if they don't know that somebody else is getting that, that's, my, I guess, my point. Yeah. And we know that there's others within town. Fire ponds? Yeah. So. Any other community input? Seeing none, we're going to adjourn by consensus at uh, 8.20 and we will see